So you're getting wrong answers when finding slopes. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the most common reasons why that might happen. If you're trying to find a slope and you're not getting the correct answer, try asking yourself these questions. Am I using points that are actually on the line? Am I considering the scales involved in the problem? Do I have the right sign, that is positive or negative? And am I being consistent with coordinates? To see how these problems can creep up in a solution, let's take a look at a specific example. Here we're given the graph of a straight line and we're asked to find the slope of that line. We can do this using a couple of different methods. We can use just the graph or we can use the slope formula. Let's start by looking just at the graph. Usually to find the slope, we pick two points on the line then we find our rise and our run and rise divided by run gives us the slope. The first problem can creep up when we try to pick our two points that we're going to use on this line. And that's what the first item in the list on the left is referring to. We want to make sure that we pick points that we know are actually on the line. Sometimes it'll look like the line goes through a point, but it actually doesn't. Uh, with our graph here, for example, it looks like the line might go through the point one zero here on the X axis. But if you look closely, there's some space there. It doesn't go through that point, which means one zero is not on the line. So we would not want to use that point when finding our slope. So be very careful and make sure you pick points that are actually on the line. So for example, on our line here, the point negative 2, 10, that point is right there. And we can see that at that point, that line is going right through the intersection of the grid lines. So negative 2, 10 is indeed a point on our line. And similarly, 4, negative 8 is also a point on our line. So make sure you choose points that you know are on the line. From there, we usually go and find our rise and our run. So our rise could be represented by that line and our run can be represented by that line. And here you, you know, I sometimes see students go and find the rise and the run by just counting the squares. So they might say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the rise is nine or negative nine, but we have to be very careful. And this is where the second point in the list on the left comes up. We have to pay attention to the scales. Notice that on our Y axis, we're actually going up by twos. Each square represents two. So here, this distance here is not actually nine. It's actually nine times two, it's 18, okay? And same with the run here. Be very careful just to check the scale. Now, in this case, our X axis is indeed going up one every square. So the number of squares does actually represent the run. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, which is good. Okay, so run is six, rise is, is it 18? Hmm. Well, look at point number three on the list uh, on the left there. We have to make sure that we use the right sign. Now looking at this line, it decreases from left to right. It goes down from left to right, which means we're expecting a negative slope. And that means that we should have some negative numbers come up when we do our calculation. And that's what happens here. The rise is actually a negative 18 because from this point to this point, we're dropping by 18 and then we're moving over six. So make sure that, uh, that you get that detail in there, okay? And you can kind of see it coming because like I said before, we know this line should have a negative slope. So make sure that, uh, that you see that in your final answer. Okay, we're ready to go and find our slope now. So our rise is negative 18 and our run is six. So our slope is rise over run, which is negative 18 divided by six. And that actually works out to a really nice number because six goes evenly into 18. That gives us negative three. Okay, the last point in the uh, list on the left there, am I being consistent co with coordinates, really comes up when you use the slope formula. So M, which is slope, is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And that's really just rise over run. And what do I mean by am I being consistent with coordinates? Well, when we do this, we usually have two points. Now you might be given those points in the problem or you might have to take them off of a graph, but uh, one of those points usually gets called point one and the other is point two. And you have to make sure that you keep those, 
those um, labels consistent through your whole solution. Don't switch what point one and point two are halfway through or you're going to get a wrong answer. So our first point up here on the left was the point negative two, ten. Okay, so that's what I'm going to call point one is negative two, ten. And our other point right here was four, negative eight. I'll call that point two. Now, it doesn't have to be that negative 210 is point 0.1 and 4 negative 8 is point 0.2. Uh, we could switch these labels. It wouldn't matter as long as we're consistent. So now when we go over to our formula, y2 minus y1, we should be doing negative 8, because that's the y value for point 0.2, minus 10, which is the y value for point 0.1. And when we divide, we're going to do x2 minus x1 in the denominator. It's important that we do 4 minus negative 2, not the other way around. We have to be consistent. This is point 0.2. So when we talk about x2, it should be the x value for point 0.2. So make sure you do 4 minus negative 2, not the other way around. Okay? And anyway, that gives us negative 18 over 6, which as we've seen is negative 3. So that's it. Make sure you're using points that are on the line. Now, of course, if you're given the points in the problem, that's not going to be an issue. It's really if you're reading it off of a graph. Make sure you're paying attention to the scales involved. Make sure you have the right sign and also make sure that you are being consistent with coordinates. And that is it.